Nowadays, Transformers is hardly a niche property. With the live-action films generating several billion dollars at the box office and nearly 40 years of content, it's safe to say that some elements of the franchise are more recognizable than others. Sure, it may not be as household a name as superheroes like Batman or Spider-Man, but I think you'll find enough people who recognize some of the basic elements of the franchise. However, with those near 40 years of content, that also means that while there's plenty of material to view and enjoy, it's just as easy for some series to slip by the wayside in the public eye. Maybe not for hardcore fans, but in the eyes of the general public, it's easy for excellent storytelling to blend in with the half-baked corporate products and slew of visual noise from bloated Hollywood films, so that when an incredibly well-done series does come out with a cast of incredibly talented voice actors and crew behind it, it's possible for it to be lost in association with the larger elements of the brand. And I'm talking, of course, about Transformers Animated. <laughs> Now, this series isn't exactly obscure if you're a longtime Transformers fan, but to those who may be a little less initiated with the franchise, it could perhaps use a bit of an introduction, as it's certainly deserving of attention. And if you're already a fan of Animated, I hope to provide some interesting behind-the-scenes information. A series initially written off by appearing too kid-centric with abstract designs, Transformers Animated is quite possibly one of the most grown-up and mature entries in the franchise, dealing with themes like wartime PTSD, betrayal, and comrade abandonment. But despite that, that doesn't mean the whole series series is just grim, dark, and edge. It has just as much humor and endearing character moments to balance out some of the more serious scenes. Attack! Right! What kind of attack would you like? Thumb attack? Carpet attack? Uh, income attack? Oh, never mind. So, before we get into things, as always, if you're new here, I'd like to humbly ask for you to consider liking or sharing the video, or even subscribing if you're interested in supporting the channel, as it goes a long way. And if you're a returning subscriber, thanks for coming back. With that said, power up the space bridge, and let's talk about Transformers Animated. And promise me one more thing. What? That you won't laugh. Sentinel? Where are you? Look down. You wouldn't laugh! The concept for what would become Transformers Animated began in 2005, when Hasbro reached out to Cartoon Network Vice President at the time, Sam Register. During this period, the current Transformers toy line was set in what was called the Unicron Trilogy, three series produced in Japan which were imported to the United States. As the final part of the series, Transformers Cybertron, had begun airing, Hasbro was looking to develop the next series in the West, likely desired due to the then-upcoming Hollywood adaptation of the franchise. Register provided a rough conceptual framework for the series, suggesting it be set in a future period where robots existed on Earth as a subservient class and have the Transformers crash land in the city of Detroit. Dang it, I already did a riff on Detroit in my last video, I can't do another now. The initial name for the series was Transformers Heroes, and some other concepts began to emerge, including a less experienced Autobot cast and the idea of them existing in a way akin to superheroes, fighting not only Decepticons but human menaces as well. Eventually, Marty Eisenberg, with credits at the time of working on shows like Spider-Man the Animated Series, Ben 10, Danny Phantom, and many other animated shows, was brought in as the head writer. Eisenberg began to make alterations to the initial concepts, including some bold ideas to make some of the heavy departures from the source material. For starters, the Great Cybertronian War, the usual conflict of the Autobots and Decepticons fighting, was set to be over by the time the series started, with the Decepticons exiled as losers of the war. Another more ambitious change was to actually make Optimus Prime not the supreme commander of all Autobots, but rather the leader of a lowly crew overlooked by Cybertronian society as a whole. With the concepts becoming more developed, it fell to art director Derek J. Wyatt to design the characters for the then-upcoming series. Wyatt was a longtime Transformers fan and had already had worked as a character designer for Teen Titans. Wyatt was extremely influential in the production of Transformers Animated, having designed its very first character, Bulkhead, a character who was completely new to the Transformers franchise with the exception of the name being used once before in a prior series. Because of this, Wyatt was able to give Bulkhead a completely original design Design, one that would shape the artistic direction of the series going forward, and following Bulkhead's creation, the designs for Optimus Prime and Prowl soon followed. In his words regarding the inspiration for his artistic take and departure from the more blocky aesthetic that prior series had, Wyatt had said, quote, I sort of just took all the Gundam out of Transformers and replaced it with Mighty Orbots. Hey guys, look what I found! Oh no, not again! <laughs> Some heroes you guys are, scared of a bottle of perfume. 
The core characters were decided upon. On the side of the Autobots, Optimus Prime, leader of a low-level repair crew, would arrive on Earth with his teammates. Prowl, a ninja who enjoys the nature and natural beauty of Earth. Bulkhead, a lovable gentle giant whose talents are often overlooked. Bumblebee, the brash and impulsive kid of the team. And Ratchet, the grizzled war veteran who serves as the team's medic. You'd be grumpy too if you had one servo in the scrap heap. Oh, I may have one servo in the scrap heap. But I can still hear! The Autobots were supported by three human characters. Isaac Sumdak, a brilliant inventor who designed most of the robots that serve humanity in the future with a secret or two to hide. And his daughter, the energetic Sari, who makes fast friends with Bumblebee where the two of them get into countless impulsively bad decisions. And perhaps the most entertaining on the organic side was Captain Fanzone, head of the Detroit police who loves nothing more in life than spending time with robots. Hey, relax. There are no lots of shortcuts. Oh. This is why I hate machines. As for the Decepticons, they were led by Megatron, who spent most of the early series as a decapitated head trapped in a laboratory. There was then Starscream, the classic treacherous second-in-command, Black Arachnia, a half-organic transformer with a tragic past, Blitzwing, the insane Decepticon triple-changer with split personalities, and above all, Lugnut, the Decepticon heavy hitter with a dogmatic obsession and extreme devotion towards Megatron, who desires nothing more than to serve his master to his fullest extent. I'm gonna be real here, Lugnut is basically an adorable puppy. If that puppy weighed over 100,000 pounds and had nuclear bombs for paws. What have you done with our beloved leader Megatron? Talk! The cast of Animated was nothing to scoff at either. Sue Blue, the casting director, who also played the role of RC on the original Transformers series, reviewed 1,600 audition tapes for the various roles in the series. While I'd love to spend the next several minutes going on about each member of the cast, it's probably best for me to limit it, unfortunately, to keep some of the key highlights. David Kay, known for his portrayal of Megatron in Beast Wars and the Unicron trilogy, turned to the good side by getting a chance to play a more inexperienced version of Optimus Prime. SpongeBob stars Tom Kenny and Bill Fagerback had lead roles in the series as Starscream and Bulkhead, respectively, Tara Strong as Sari, and many, many other voice actors contributing fantastic performances. The series even had some strong guest pull, with Fred Willard and Weird Al Yankovic as guest roles. You're gonna destroy the whole city! You wouldn't dare do something that stupid! I am Redgar! I dare to be stupid! I will destroy the whole city! The series premiere aired on December 26, 2007 as a television movie made of the first three episodes. Animation was provided by several Japanese companies, notably Mook Animation, known for X-Men Evolution and Batman Mr. Freeze Sub-Zero, and Studio 4C, which would later go on to animate the Berserk Golden Age trilogy. That's the Berserk movies and not the 2016 PowerPoint presentation. To give a very brief overview of this series, Season 1 of Transformers Animated focused on the Autobots crash landing on Earth and getting accommodated with the variety of Earth customs, while in the background, Megatron, whose decapitated head had survived the crash, works his way into obtaining a new body. Season 2 introduces us to the Autobot Elite Guard as Autobot Supreme Commander Ultra Magnus arrives on Earth to investigate Decepticon activity, where his second-in-command, Sentinel Prime, has tensions rooted in the past with Optimus. And finally, Season 3 sees the Autobots on Earth attempting to make contact with their homeworld of Cybertron to warn them of Megatron's impending plans of attack. One of the things that Animated handled very well was its own internal continuity. Character interactions were always built up upon and constantly evolving, where seemingly throwaway lines of dialogue were actually meant to build upon later in the series. While the show was able to manage overarching plots, there was enough individuality in the season to not make everything feel so syndicated. The reason for this was apparently that Eisenberg wanted to have an overarching plot to shape the direction and narrative points of the season, but also wanted those arcs to be vague enough to not put limits on the other writers. And one of the things I'd want to touch upon is how well the series blended comedy with honestly more serious themes of the conflicts of war. And the character whose arc I believe exemplifies the more serious tones of animated is Autobot Medic Ratchet. Prior to this series, at least in animation, war in Transformers wasn't exactly complex. The Autobots were wholly good protectors, and the war amounted to little more than different color lasers firing at each other across the battlefield. It's probably what made the 1986 movie so infamous, as for the first time, Transformers' death was a serious possibility, as it showed kids for the first time that war wasn't exactly just fun this time, just because it was robots instead of human beings. No! Such heroic nonsense! Thank <laughs> you. 
Animated certainly treated things a little bit differently than the norm. It introduced Ratchet as a wartime medic who not only failed to save a patient in the heat of battle, but also suffered injuries in that fight. Injuries that he never got a chance to come to terms with, and as a result, freezes up when confronted with haunting memories. And here, the Autobots weren't exactly wholeheartedly the good guys. Rather than just being a textbook pacifist, Ratchet ends up more complex as he calls out the Autobot High Command using a dumbed-down super warrior who doesn't have the capability to think of the destruction he'd cause with the response being told to him that it's war and they have to do what they must. This type of Autobots not being wholly good trait is seen later in Sentinel Prime, a character who starts looking down on Optimus, bitter over an incident in their pasts, but over time Sentinel shifts from a jerk who thinks humans are not worth his time to an authoritarian ruler of Cybertron, and had the show continued into season 4, we would have seen his grip on the planet tighten, but sit tight, we'll talk about the cancelled season 4 in a bit. Now, it's worth noting that although the Autobots definitely had some morally grey characters, the Decepticons didn't necessarily have that, and were more traditionally evil and animated. That being said, I don't think that was a detriment in any way. Although the series itself doesn't establish what the Great War was about, we do know that the Decepticons of course lost and were exiled from their own homeworld. So really, their motivation turns to regaining their pride and having a foothold again on their own planet. And in the series, Megatron, the usual archenemy of the Transformers brand, is quite possibly at his worst. Differing from most iterations of the character, this version of Megatron has no prior history with Optimus Prime or any Autobot, and in fact never refers to any of them by name throughout the entirety of the series. It displays a mentality of superiority, hardly capable of recognizing anything that isn't deemed important in his eyes. He's incredibly manipulative, but also has the firepower to back it up, and unlike in other series, the Autobots are not capable of fighting Megatron, especially when a lone Decepticon provides enough of a challenge to them. So with all that said, this brings us to a very unfortunate point in our story, the cancellation. The announcement that Transformers Animated had ended came at BotCon 2009 from Cartoon Network representatives, and that a fourth season would not be made, mere days after the season 3 finale. Certainly a heavy shock, as the plans for season 4 were already being made by Hasbro, Eisenberg, Wyatt, and the rest of the team. Intending to deepen the series after the events of season 3, season 4 would have kicked off with a spectacular display of Megatron breaking out of prison and creating a new Decepticon city on Earth. Meanwhile, the rivalry between Optimus Prime and Sentinel Prime, as Sentinel grows angry with the praise Optimus receives for his heroics and begins to tighten his grip on Cybertron in order to solidify his place as Autobot Supreme Commander. Changes were going to be implemented to allow the series to be more in line with the ongoing live-action Transformers movies. Optimus Prime would have gained flames on his designs, Ratchet would have turned green in order to match his movie counterpart, and Autobots Ironhide and Jazz would have joined the main crew on Earth, aligning with the Autobot cast in the first Transformers film. The Decepticons would have seen their own upgrades as a prototype figure was made of a triple changer Megatron with a tank and a jet as alternate forms. Season 4 intended to show his slip from sanity as his cool and collected demeanor in the first three seasons shifted into raw rage and instability, frustrated by his string of failures at the hands of Optimus Prime. Optimus Prime was going to receive a toy update as well as he was intended to get a Power Master upgrade based on an old toy from 1988 where he would be able to upgrade into a super mode with a suit of armor. In addition to the opening three-parter, The Trial of Megatron, several episode concepts were being developed. These included really fascinating story ideas, such as one where a new human faction called Steam emerges, intending to rid the planet of any and all robots, and a much more popular one, where characters Bulkhead and Sari would have accidentally traveled to a mirror universe to discover the heroic Decepticons fighting off evil Autobots. Now, while these episodes don't exist themselves, it's worth noting that there actually is some content of Season 4 that you can actually watch. In 2019, Marty Eisenberg attended TF Nation, a Transformers convention in the UK, and he brought a very special treat for fans. That is, a recorded outline of the opening three-part premiere of Season 4, with the exception of Tara Strong as Sorry, the entire main cast returned to a voice their respective characters. This wasn't a script that would be recorded, but each voice actor was able to read their scenes involving their characters, which was accompanied by new artwork for visualization. Originally, this screening was only available at TF Nation in 2019, however, in August of 2021, during a TF Nation livestream event, the full Trial of Megatron treatment was made available publicly for the first time and can be viewed in its entirety here on YouTube. I'll have the link to the videos here posted in the description below. After its cancellation, Transformers of course carried on, but some of the remnants of Animated carried over into the franchise and developed as staples for the brand. In the next series, Transformers Prime, Bulkhead was added again to the main cast due to his popularity in Transformers Animated, and the popular bounty hunter character Lockdown, who appeared for the first time in Animated, was so popular that he was able to make the jump into the live-action series in 2014 as the main antagonist 
protagonist of Transformers Age of Extinction. On this planet, we have a saying. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. I also have a saying. I don't care. In 2015, comic book publisher IDW released the complete AllSpark Almanac, a book detailing the production of Transformers Animated based on two books that came out prior, filled with lucrative behind-the-scenes details never known about the series prior, where a lot of the information in this video stems from. The reach of the brand even extends into 2022, as it was announced at Hasbro PulseCon in September that the lovable Lugnut won the official Transformers Hall of Fame award for the fandom's most beloved character in Transformers Animated. And while there hasn't been any toys announced or leaked just yet, Transformers Animated presence can definitely be seen on the Year 2 artwork for Transformers Legacy, which could potentially be a sign of figures to come in 2023. However, there's still some tragedy in the legacy of Transformers Animated. On December 16th, 2021, Derek J. Wyatt passed away. The influence he had on the series was immeasurable, as his artistic vision shaped the characters in tone and had a serious impact on the development of the series. Even after the series cancellation, Wyatt continued to post new designs and characters on his social media pages, keeping the spirit of the show very alive. Considering the legacy of the series and the concepts that re-emerged in other Transformers shows as the series progressed, I think it's safe to say that the brand would never truly be the same had it not been for his work and passion for the characters. I'd extend that to the entirety of the cast and crew, from the voice actors who brought the characters to life, to Sam Register for developing conceptual framework at Cartoon Network, and Marty Eisenberg for spearheading the writing direction. So coming back to the central theme of this video, I think that outside of the Transformers community, this entry in the franchise appears as little more than just another part of 40 years of content, but when looking at it closer, you'll find a well-developed tale by storytelling veterans that adds a level of nuance to the brand, something which hadn't been seen since Beast Wars in the 1990s. And despite being radical departures from what's typically expected of the norm of Transformers storytelling, such as Optimus Prime not being the leader of the the Autobots, I think it was however balanced out by a clear level of dedication to quality content coming from the team involved and an interest and passion for the series, as it was clear that they had fans working on it. And in handling darker plot elements, Animated honestly does a better job than many other Transformers series. It's things like that which is why Transformers Animated is not only one of my favorite entries into the franchise, but it's also one of my favorite cartoons of all time. If you're interested in checking out the series if you haven't already, while there aren't any official means to support it at the moment, you could easily find all the episodes here on YouTube, including the aforementioned Trial of Megatron Season 4 outline. Other YouTube pages, such as Kian Carly's Transformers channel, are responsible for uncovering lost media of Transformers animated and have done a real service to the community by hosting some of the lost shorts and production test information, so I'd recommend checking out their content if you'd like to go even deeper into the behind-the-scenes information about Transformers animated. As for me, well, I'm just gonna continue hope that Lugnut shows up inevitably in another Transformers series or toy line to get the updated love and appreciation that a puppy like like Kim's deserves. I am the most faithful. Have you blown a diode? I'm trying to work here. I did nothing. No. Oh, for Spark's sake. <laughs> And that's the production information for Transformers Animated. Have you seen Animated already? If so, who's your favorite on the series? Do you need to explain why you hate machines? Let me know in the comments below. Next video, we'll be returning to the Did Nothing Wrong series as I get a little bit more normalized into a production schedule. As always, if you have any suggestions for future videos, let me know in the comments or come hang out in the Discord linked in the description below. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope I can see you next time. Hey, I feel funny. <laughs> Oh!